I wasn't no I yeah. No, really. I all of a sudden felt like I started dripping when you said It's just visiting, that's all it is. It okay. Is. It's like really good. People usually when they end and they think it's mm-hmm. like so easy and they even forget. Because we're just I chatting know away. when we were doing this with the kids with um speech, that mm-hmm. speech we used to videotape them and let them watch how they oh, make the yeah. sounds. Mm-hmm. Once in a while, I used to forget the TVs on. I'm going, I'm going to bonk you. <laughs> <laughs> Ublumi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Do Not a Nick show. I'm your host. My name is Mar- Margaret Nixana. We are broadcasting live out of the Indian Valley Cultural Resource Center located here in Nunavik. On today's episode, we have our new guest, and we're really excited mm-hmm. to have her on. We have the Miss Barb Memogana. How do I say your name? The proper way, because I heard you say it last night. Oh, Barb Mimogana. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mim- Mimog- Mimogana. Mim- <laughs> it's more like an R than a G. Yeah, Mimog- mm-hmm. Mimogana. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> thank you for coming on. How are you? I'm good. Excited to be on the show? Yes, I'm yeah. very excited. I've had your name down for weeks. To approach you and ask you, I just had to get a hold of you no. to come on. <laughs> so I was really, really happy when you said that you would come on today's show. Mm-hmm. Um, I always start every show off the same way I do, and I ask um, the guests to tell me a little bit about themselves, who they are, where they're from, um, in the exact same way that you would introduce yourself to an elder. So usually elders ask you, you know, uh, where you're from, who's your parents, your grandparents, and then that way they can know who you are. Mm -hmm. So if you could just go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Barbara Mimogana. I'm um, Barbara Ikugana Mimogana. Ikugana is my given name from my parents. Mm -hmm. And I was born in Ulu and raised and grew up hunting and trapping, fishing, all learning all of the uh, survival skills and life skills. Mm-hmm. So you grew up in, U- you're living here in Inuvik now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you grew up in Ulu your whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was it like growing up? Because it's a big island, isn't it? It it was nice. It was a lot of fun mm-hmm. and challenging at the same time because we had to work with a lot of um, animals. We had to work with skins. Um, working with meat Mm -hmm. and when we were done with those on our evening times we used to do sewing or play games or tell Mm -hmm. stories or listen to stories or drum dance so yeah that was really nice yeah um were you there when they did the revival because i understand they did a revival for drum dancing in ulu Mm, no, I no, no, I wasn't okay. there. And maybe I, it was before your time, because when I went there, it was the elders that were telling me about like people from Tuck had gone and. Oh, back then, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. that, that's when Cope was getting started, and yeah. they started coming over, coming across with um, mm-hmm. charters. Yeah, yeah, they used to go to my parents' place and drum dance or drum dance on the shore. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you used to hear that. I love the sound of the drums mm-hmm. and the singing. Yeah, it's it's so like it's almost it's like beautiful. And it's like almost magical. It's oh, like, it is. It's so lifting. Yeah. Um. It takes your it almost takes your all your troubles away (laughs) yeah it's so Mm -hmm. uplifting yeah um what was it like growing up in Ulu like I wanted like because I've been there only one time in my life Mm -hmm. um we went to is Mm Mashuyuk I've been to (laughs) Mashuyuk it seems so different like the land is different Mm -hmm. and the animals are different than here or in Tuck Mm -hmm. yeah it's mainly with seasons. Everybody used to go by seasons, mm-hmm. like um, the animals. Yeah. So it was harvesting. Springtime was mashuya, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Duck season time, seal hunting time. Seal hunting. And caribou going down the coast, going mm-hmm. far away. And <laughs> sometimes you just get 
so far upland and you get muskox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we went to Mashiach, we crossed to that island, that one with a big cliff, mm -hmm. and we got a muskok up there. Yeah. Yeah, they did a harvest, and we all had to carry a oh, piece of meat. Me. Yeah, a piece <laughs> yeah. Of, and I carried the ribs going <laughs> down. Yeah, I remember I kept my hands, like, warm because it was so chilly there. Oh, Even in the summertime, mm -hmm. it was cold. It is with the uh, salt water and a lot of body of water there. It is a little chilly. <laughs> and it's, like, rock mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, and then when we went up on the hill, you could see whales. You could see just about everything when you go up mm -hmm. on the hill yeah. or down to the shore. Like the water is so clear, you could see a lot of yeah. wildlife. Yeah. yeah. You must have done, like, did you do whale hunting with yeah. your family? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to go out and do that. Yeah, I got to yeah. go out with my um, dad and my brothers. But mm -hmm. never really hunted, <laughs> never really <laughs> shot one. Yeah. <laughs> um, how old were you when you moved across here? Like, or you just went back and forth? Well, I came for high school in 86, 87. Mm -hmm. And then was done. I went back to Ulu and then started um, sub teaching here and there. Nice. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then I went to Corset here around Nunavut and Alberta. Mm -hmm. Miguel. So, so that's something else that I wanted to talk about was you have become quite, is it called a, you know when you can say a lot, of, like you can speak a lot of languages? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you worked with all like all the languages the mm -hmm. new and dialects and yeah did you do other ones as well the Nunavut dialects yeah, yeah. very um similar to the um Ulukatok dialects too so yes but mm -hmm. they're a lot longer <laughs> a lot <laughs> so complex how did you get involved in doing all of that when I was teaching well, we used a lot, we had to use a lot of language because mm -hmm. back then we never really spoke English. Mm -hmm. So we knew a lot of English and our own language. And when I started teaching, they asked me to teach um, Inuin Naktun. So that's when I started teaching Inuin Naktun. Did you have to learn how to do the spelling? Um, no, I already knew how to read and write in um our language really yeah that's a really good skill to have too because mm -hmm. it's like can be difficult to learn fluently mm -hmm. and then to spell read and write in it yeah. as well yeah yeah <laughs> I the old writing system I learned from that that was easy mm -hmm. but then when they started cutting some of the um, alphabets out and saying you mm -hmm. don't sound them out in English you have to mm -hmm. sound them out in the language mm -hmm. and that's when I started realizing yeah the sounds of the alphabets are a little different <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um and then sewing you grew up sewing mm -hmm. as well yeah did you have to do we had to learn how to make our own mitts our own shoes parkas this our all the attire we used back then we had to learn how to make on our own yeah mm -hmm. in ulu do they get geese there the mm -hmm. same way as sax harbor yeah. yeah yeah when people long ago when they harvested for feathers to make it um like the down did they use like geese and 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 duck, or, and duck both mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. yeah did you have to do that growing up yeah like save the down mm -hmm. you yeah. just have to take the um stiff feathers out first and then yeah start plucking off the down putting them in bags <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or when we take walks on the land you know their nesting sites got mm -hmm. lots of down yeah and no you don't have to clean them off really those we used to pick. Those, and, that's yeah. really smart. And wash them off, just like with our muskok down. Yeah. Yeah. The kivyuk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We used to pick mm -hmm. them up off the land too. 
That's what someone asked me to do in Sox Harbor. They're one easier year. to clean than the ones you get off the hide. Yeah? Yeah. Because someone had asked me if I could get muskox the kivio mm -hmm. and i was like i don't know if i could get like kivio like you can it's, it's, well that's what she said she said mm -hmm. just when you go out on the land um, when you're you walking see. and you see something like this that's mm -hmm. kivio i've seen it yeah. i just never picked it up you oh. have to <laughs> it's so it's told. so valuable yeah someone mm -hmm. should have really well i'm sure i'm not the only one going for a ride why but i'm thinking like 15 years ago when I first went mm -hmm. there and muskox were just abundant everywhere. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I remember seeing it all over and I had no idea that I should have been picking it. <laughs> and and it's, really, it's really easy to make into thread our yarn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know Lena Wilkie does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does the... Spinning? Yes. You don't need the um, spinning needle to, mm -hmm. to do that because yeah. they never had that back then. Back they then? Just did so with smart, their hands, hey? you know, they just felt mm -hmm. and the texture and the toughness of it to see yeah. how strong it becomes. That's so innovative. Like that's mm -hmm. so that's so crafty that people can do that with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and in Ulu, that was the first time I ever tried muskox. Oh. They they used it to make stir fry, mm -hmm. and I was a bit like I grew up on caribou. And I'd never tried, like, I I grew up on caribou. I hardly ate moose and I hardly, I've never tried muskox. And so when I tried it when I was in Ulu, I was a bit nervous. And then I tried it and it was so good. Oh, it's so good. And I went back for seconds because people were telling me, like, all the elders were like, don't be scared, just try it. Just, mm -hmm. you're going to like it. And then I tried it and I had just a tiny little bowl and I was like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> and I went back for more because it was a community feast. Mm -hmm. It was gone. It's all gone. It <laughs> goes really quick. The smaller they are, the more they taste more like caribou. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what oh, if it was a big muskox or not, but it was pie. really oh, good. Oh, that's so popular in the, yeah. the muskox pie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was, yeah, it was a big stir fry. And it was, the, you, do you remember the um, Ocean Stay? Mm -hmm. That's what I went there for. The oh, Ocean Stay. Okay. Yeah. And anything. Any kind of events going on in Ulu, mm -hmm. you'll, oh, you'll get to eat a lot of native food, and yeah. it's so good, mm -hmm. and all fresh. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it was just abundant there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you grew up your whole life then eating all of the cultural foods mm -hmm. and... Harvesting, working on it, drying it, cooking <laughs> it, <laughs> it's, it's storing so, it. It's so, it's a lot of work, but it's so good. Mm -hmm, it is. Yeah. It Did is. you ever get into like um, learning the nutritional value of it? Like while you're learning language and everything? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Cause we had to learn that uh, the nutrition of each animal mm -hmm. and the parts that are good for medicinal or just for, mm -hmm. you know, use, mm -hmm. everyday use, which was really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Is there any, like, stories that come to mind of, like, growing up and, like, I'm sure there must have been a lot of laughter. Did you guys do a lot of, did you guys do, um, do you know when you're doing like Arctic sports and you do the funny versions of them for them laughs? Did you guys ever mm -hmm. do that? We used to. Yeah. I did a lot of high kicking back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My last time I ever did high kicking was 87. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember like how high you used to be able to kick? I came in first. <laughs> oh, did you? Mm -hmm. For like competitions? Mm -hmm. Was this that back was when... at Northern Games? Yeah, was that when yeah. Ed Edward Lenny was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it was around that time when he started. There was a lot of them up there at that time. Yeah, they had charters go in from each community. Mm -hmm. So the town was full and lots of competitors. Yeah, and it was so much fun. So, Boy, we had so much laughs and so many crazy, um, what you call, accidents. <laughs> <laughs> Happy accidents. Yeah. yeah. A few times going in, you know how the doors swing closed 
they never used to do that. They used to open mm -hmm. them and they'd stay open. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the um, gym doors, now yeah. they close on their own. Yeah. A few times I walk right into the door <laughs> and there's people standing by the Pepsi glass and I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's funny. And so you said that you, you is was it women's, the women's high kicking then mm -hmm. that you joined? Yeah. yeah One just... foot, two foot, and that. I forgot what was the other one. One foot and two foot, and the one with the belt. Yeah. The Alaskan, yeah. I think. I can't remember. Me too. Do you remember how high you kicked? Not with the other two, but uh, the one foot I went seven, seven three, seven four. That's insane. I know. So like all that good food and nutrition from growing up on the land, <laughs> just help to like make you strong and you could go and do that kind we of had stuff. to do a lot of hiking too yeah on the land mm -hmm. like if we weren't doing anything by the camp area we'd have to be up on the land picking roots or picking um maho mm -hmm. um kongula berries it was always something we're always yeah. busy doing something mm -hmm. yeah not like this <laughs> <laughs> I still can <laughs> not even with a game or oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you, you a, were built to go like this here try this play this game with me and I'm going uh, I'm not a game player <laughs> you and I have that in common because I say like even Mario I don't know how to play <laughs> I could play the Scrabble one or the crossword yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's about it but a few times. Have you ever played Best Fiends? I are you calling me names? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a game. <laughs> like, oh. I don't even know. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I was like, you have to show me. <laughs> yeah. So so you spent a lot of time on the land then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What are some things that you had to make growing up? Sleds. Uh, mm. Things to keep yourself busy, like toy skidoos, sleds, <laughs> just anything you could find and make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, like when you say sleds, did you make like traditional camping sleds or like toys? Just like small little sliding sleds. Oh. Like the ones so they have can... the long, big ones. Yeah. Like they a travel in? with with mm -hmm. on the coast yeah we had to make small little ones to keep ourselves busy to slide down or <laughs> go get furs and slide down on them the furs yeah mm -hmm. that's what i was thinking like just like a garbage that's bag that's how just... we cleaned the uh, fur oh yeah we used to take the fur the dried fur and go up the hills and mm -hmm. slide down with them and drop clean the fur yeah. yeah it must take out some of the the, the oils and uh, yeah like the dirt that's on them mm -hmm. yeah. that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. and it sounds like it makes it more fun for kids and kids to learn and be involved then because when we worked on polar bears mm -hmm. wash them in the tub and then in drag the them well that like in a like a bin like a when you wash them uh, so we made holes in a ocean no i didn't do ice. that i didn't do that that's how we washed our uh, bears yeah no bears. Like greg just put it in like a big bin oh. and washed it and then took it out like spread it out and oh then... my god you guys are new school now <laughs> <laughs> not like the old yeah. days they used to get yeah. chisels and just <laughs> chip, chip holes in the ice and all that and heavy yeah that's mm -hmm. what he said like he'd put it on like tie it up to a skidoo and then mm -hmm. drag it with the yeah. skidoo to clean it like mm -hmm. clean it out on the back snow. then they used to put a few couple of dogs and let them pull and that's how it dries up the uh, fur too yeah. on the skin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because that's what he's talking about okay so like my mother-in-law she told me and you can probably relate to this then because me growing up we had augers to go fishing like ice fishing mm -hmm. and you just make a hole with an auger my mother-in-law said that long ago you the family used to chisel mm -hmm. a hole and it was so much work that once you made your hole no one would take it 
like outside of the family you know people coming and no one would take your hole because of how much work it was to make your hole back then she said everyone's arms used to get tired and take turns it was but yeah. it was one one good exercise she could have yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah now people just use an auger and two uh, minutes <laughs> a lot of people still use some um, chisels too yeah mm -hmm. i've never I, I couldn't imagine that much work yeah, <laughs> you probably, oh, how many more days to go? <laughs> yeah. Just put a ice on the ice on the water, <laughs> Just, or I mean, um, a rock on the ice and let it melt through. <laughs> I've heard people say that they do that too. Yeah. What's nice, so they make um, poles at the close lake for people to go to and fish mm -hmm. nowadays. It's now they do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, um, people must still like go and collect ice for elders and stuff for drinking water. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for good tea and coffee. It makes the best. Oh, it's it, really good. Yeah. Like when we went there for holidays, I made mm -hmm. sure I brought back two <laughs> bottles of water. Ice water. Mm -hmm. It's so fresh. It is. Do you, I've seen people online, um, like. I don't know what they're doing to their water, but you can test it, like the alkaline, and then use like some type of rod to see how activated it is. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you were to test like a spring, like a hot spring, the water mm -hmm. is like really activated and healthy. Mm -hmm. I would be interested to see how the water is. The ice water is probably really good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking in terms of like the nutritional side, like I think we are the ones with one of the best water. Yeah. Yeah. I would really be interested to see that. <laughs> two, I think it was two years ago. It was all out mm. that uh, Ulu had was the second. I best would like to see that mm -hmm. in the world with the second best water. Yeah. Yeah. It must be really good. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. so good. You constantly want it. Even when you drive up to the lake, mm -hmm. lake it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I was talking about with Jason Nasu mm -hmm. when he was talking about like when he was out in the land in Sex Harbor and he was thirsty so his uncle got him like fresh water from mm -hmm. the river that runs there. And I was like, I've had that water and it's really good. It is. <laughs> yeah. It, anywhere on the coast, mm -hmm. when you drink water from the coast, it's yeah. so good, so <laughs> pure, mm -hmm. it's so clean. Mm -hmm. um, and then for sewing, we can get back to that. Um, what are some things that you've had to sew? Like who taught you how to sew? Both my mom and my dad and my brothers and sisters used to help me. Yeah. 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 And you had to sew everything. Yeah. Yeah. First time I ever did a sewing was a <laughs> duffels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my dad used to always say to me and my uh, mom, you have to sew them really good. You shouldn't, you have to make your stitches tight or you're going to have air holes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you and know, because there's holes. You, yeah. If you make them too big, you have mm -hmm. holes in between, right? Yeah. And if you don't make them tight, then you have draft going through. Yeah. So, if you guys were making shoes back then, what did you use? Because I'm assuming there was no moose or no moose hide. We used um, seal. Seal. Obeo? They uh, dried it and yeah. they never tan. They never used to tan it. They left it hot dried hard yeah. and they used to make the uh, waterproof sole. So was it ogiuk that you were? And seal. And seal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but ogiuk was the best because it was thicker Yeah. and it didn't wear out. So did they, did you have to do the chewing then? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah? What was that like? Um, also work? <laughs> really yucky. <laughs> I had to learn how to use pliers. <laughs> That's how yeah. I asked you what I was that did. like. I had to learn how to use long nose pliers. Yeah. Because it will, I, I start, <clears throat> you know, just from the smell. <laughs> my, <laughs> and my sister's using 
Quit being precious. <laughs> <laughs> because they used to do it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's how come I asked you because I remember my nana, <laughs> my nana Mabel said that that was the one thing she never learned how to do because she, <laughs> she kept making sounds mm-hmm. in her. <laughs> I know, even to scrape our skin. Oh my god, I used to pop fly off one <laughs> doing this how many times and then you'd see the oil fly right <laughs> on you or when you get up you just smell like an animal <laughs> so, oh my first time my sister Roberta would be just laughing because I'd be sitting there going <laughs> <laughs> trying not to yeah. <laughs> gay yeah <laughs> but you did it mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Do and um, I bet you those shoes are still around somewhere. Okay, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And somebody who could put up with the smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So that's like um something very valued then, because not a lot of people do that around here anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't see, anyways. No, you don't see it anymore. Maybe everyone should just learn pliers. <laughs> <laughs> and those um, prints, press prints oh, for shoes. Yeah. <laughs> just put oh, that mold. would work. <laughs> <laughs> Go to tell IRC to invest in. Yeah. <laughs> Get a, a two by four and cut a uh, shoe out. <laughs> Print and there you go. Press. Yeah. <laughs> really crafty. Just <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm getting a headache from giggling. <laughs> Get long notes pliers and just do the rough edges. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, so that's how they did the shoes. And then what about for pants? How did people make pants long ago? With um, what animal they had left. They used to use seal, caribou, caribou. musk ox, mm-hmm. polar bear. Polar bear was the warmest. Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Just for pants, the polar bear? And some, they used it for jackets. Some people used it for jackets. Yeah. Mitts, that shoes. must have been like a prized possession. It was very valuable because yeah. it was really, really warm. Mm-hmm. Just like a musk ox. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to, to get, like long ago, must have been hard to get polar bears. Like yeah. a lot of work. It is. Yeah. It, it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And it is a lot. It a lot of time, a lot of a lot of tracking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you ever help work on polar bears? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that takes a lot of time too. Yeah, it's a lot of flushing. A lot of people get mm-hmm. together, and at least it's not hard like seal. No, it it was actually when family members used to get polar bears. Like the whole family used to get together mm-hmm. and help out. Mm-hmm. It was such a nice time to gather around. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's I I've worked on polar bears only a few times in my life, and it was the same thing. Like yeah. five, six people family get together, just get together and help out each lots other. Lots of food, lots mm-hmm. of laughing, lots of ulus. Yeah, lots of sharpening, and then put a bowl <laughs> and go like that. I remember when I was in that one year in Sex Harbor, I said I'm gonna. I'm going to learn how to do my own seals, like trying to figure out how I can work on the seal skins. Mm -hmm. And then my mother-in-law told me they're so hard to work on. Um, She said, any little bit of sand underneath your board will make a hole. Mm -hmm. Mine looked like a fishnet. I I got sick of it and threw it away. (laughs) I was so mad. Pellet holes. It was. You just need a little pebble or sand and you're like Mm -hmm. on the board scraping. That's one thing too that they used to take the hair off with um, sand. Really? Mm -hmm. Like long ago? Mm -hmm. They never used to flush it. They used to um, we used to go and collect sand and take the hair off the seal. Like when it's soft? Like when it's fresh? No, no. when it's dried. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, we used to <laughs> go and get sand and sit around outside and talk around and just start scraping hair off a seal. Yeah, mm-hmm. it sounds like you were always busy. Yeah, we, it was, we always had to be busy doing something or keeping up with... Um, Skins because they always got a lot of seal, mm-hmm. fish, k- 
caribou, rabbit, just mm -hmm. all of them. And you and all of your siblings all mm -hmm. helped with everything? Yeah. Did you, do you come from a big family? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Lots of siblings and cousins? Lots. Lots of, I had lots of sisters and brothers. I'm yeah. the second youngest also. Oh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, today, the first, I always like to do the first portion, just talking and getting mm -hmm. to know my guests. But today we have a goal. So this is going to be a two-part episode. So with Bambi, we had Bambi Amos on mm -hmm. two weeks ago and last week. And we did two episodes where we were we made myths. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do two episodes again, and we're going to work and make slippers. So yeah. seal skin slippers. So who taught you how to make slippers? My mom. Your mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With duffel, too. <laughs> With duffel? <laughs> My first pair of um, duffel slippers I made, I had to do them really good, and I finally did them really good. Mm -hmm. Except I sewed them onto my pants. <laughs> I, saw, I was like, I'm done. Oops. <laughs> now I'm going to have to redo them over once mom sees them because she's going to be cutting the thread off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it, with my dad, he'd go, your mom's not going to like that if you don't sew it properly. <laughs> And the first time he said that, he started taking my stitches off, and I'm like, I just did that. <laughs> it's important to learn, though, mm -hmm. learn correct. And properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nunki always, always emphasizes if it's not done right, take it apart and redo it. I yeah. did my middle one. I, she said, I'm going to learn how to sew. So I said, okay. I cut her out her um, strout. Mm-hmm. And she was making a pair of um, little slip kid slippers, and I didn't. They were the stitches was so loose, so I took took it apart. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Here, do it over. You got to do it properly." She looks at me and she goes, "You do it. I had it done the first time." <laughs> it's important to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You yeah. want to learn, you have to learn properly. <laughs> There's a sewing machine. <laughs> no, by hand. Yeah. Um, so we have, like when you said that, you know, we'd like to do sealskin slippers, mm -hmm. I thought, perfect. We have a ton of um, material here that we used for the show last week. We mm -hmm. could... You know, our, our people are known to not waste anything. No. Use you're... every part of... Elderly and your parents would get upset if they see you wasting pieces mm -hmm. like this or mm -hmm. even the tiniest pieces because if they were this color and this color, mm -hmm. you know the shapes? Yeah. They used to make the other side uh, like a long diamond or a even block and they used mm -hmm. to sew them together and that's how they make the braids. That's so crafty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like literally nothing went. No. Nothing ever went. And to. they used to keep the pieces because if your shoe wore out in an area, you have that back the, to repair the piece to repair the skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was, I'll, I'll tell a story. When I was looking to get a new backpack, I've mm -hmm. had a backpack for 15 years now. And it had a big rip in the, like around the zipper area and uh, it's just falling apart. And I told my daughter, grab that sinew. And I started sewing it and mm -hmm. I sewed it all back together. And I told my partner, I looked at him and I was like, there, now it's good for another 15 more years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I love this backpack. I'm never getting rid of it. Okay, so we can work on the pattern. <coughs> I watched you cut this pattern out live mm -hmm. right in front of me. Yeah, that's what we used to do. We used to have to make our patterns. We never really, really had patterns. So whatever we had or we wanted to make bigger growing up, mm -hmm. we used to have to make it longer. Just mm -hmm. with the same pattern, but just enlarge yeah. back or forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So if your foot grew more this way, then you'd make this side longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so crafty. And then and then you did the bottoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
we can go ahead and get started. We have one seal skin here. I think that's enough. If not, we have more. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So if you want to decide, I'll follow you. And with you. these with, uh, pieces like this, mm -hmm. they never ever threw them away. Mm -hmm. You see why things are, patterns are half to, to go in the... Um, yeah. Then you could use one half from this, this side, side. Mm -hmm. and then switch it over to mm -hmm. the other side to mm -hmm. make the other half. Yep. And then you have the one. Bambi put it like this mm -hmm. just to show that this yeah. part is, is got yeah. patchy. So we did that just to. So maybe and that's just a good idea it. too, is to look at your fur before you start using yeah. it. Yeah, she marked Or you might can... end up with bald spots. Too. Yeah, she did. She marked mm -hmm. off the spots where we wouldn't. Yeah. So if you want, you can go ahead and do mm -hmm. your portion of the pattern. Sometimes, too, the imprint from your nail mm -hmm. is a, um, like a, a guideline. Mm -hmm. You see where it... Yeah. Yeah, and that's the end of the... Mm -hmm. Where the um, hair comes out. Do you have an idea who you're gonna, if you're going to keep these or give them to someone when you're done? I probably could wear them this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were talking about earlier, you said that you never kept your last pair you made. No, I never really kept what I made. Mm -hmm. When I'm making something, it was always for someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or someone wanted a, a pair made. Yeah. And they'd ask to have it made. Mm hmm then I just ask them if they have skins or a uh, preference of hide or mm -hmm. whatnot they wanted in. Hide is really, I, I, I think it's because of the graduation, <laughs> but it's really hard to get. I mm -hmm. went looking through town and there's just no hide anywhere. No. I, I think it's because, you know, everyone's making beautiful slippers and everything. And stoves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are beautiful. So that's going to be one shoe. One slipper. Oh, you know what we might not have? Last time Bambi provided it. What? The... Well, we can always cut them out on the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the exacto knife. And I can yeah. bring some. Yes. Yeah. See, even pieces like this, mm -hmm. they would go like this. Mm -hmm. And then you see this. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just cut it? No. Oh. They would put this at the end. Mm -hmm. Put this make a mark, put it back on the pattern, mark it, and find the piece the same size, Yeah. and then trace it, and then yeah. sew it together as, mm -hmm. as another one. size. Yeah. Just not wasting any no. of it. No. Mm -hmm. We weren't allowed to waste not mm -hmm. a piece. One time I forgot to tell this young girl that she really wanted to learn how to sew. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, I know what you're talking about. I get what you mean. And I forgot to look at what she was doing. All the fur was going up when she <laughs> cut out the, pad, the everything up after she traced it. Yeah. And I looked. She said, there, I'm done. I'm ready to sew it together. <laughs> and I didn't know how to tell her it was all backwards. <laughs> the skin was going the wrong, the fur was yeah, going the wrong way. Oh, they were all going goodness. the wrong way. Oh, no. But we got them done. Yeah. She, oh, 
they, everybody just loved them even though they were all the wrong way. Yeah. She still wore them because they were the first one she's <laughs> ever made and she was so proud of them. Yeah. And she said, you know what? I don't care if it's a bad compliment. At least it's a compliment that I made something. <laughs> yeah. My sister-in-law used to tease me when I really got into sewing and she used to say, I'm the the what did she say she basically teased me about always starting a project and leaving it incomplete like oh. i always wanted to do stuff mm -hmm. like a multitasker basically she said just just a little tease i still made stuff it was just teasing but i really stopped um when I moved away from Sex Harbor, that's where I was really starting. Mm -hmm. When they first started, restarted the sewing classes back in 2008, I believe. The coast is so alive with those kinds of programs mm -hmm. all year round. Mm -hmm. they're, they're either got the camp camps going or winter time they have all these programs sewing programs language programs on the land programs mm -hmm. which is so nice mm And when you're doing um, soles, mm -hmm. try to do them where it stretches. Yeah, that way? Yeah, and forward and backward, way. not the wide way, or you're going to have one really wide feet. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that one mm -hmm. time. I said, why my uh, wits feel like it's like really <laughs> big? Yeah. And my friend said, because you got, you use the stretchy part of the moose hide. I said, is there a stretchy part or a non-stretchy part? And she said, well, why did you put the pattern <laughs> that way? I said, it would, it fit. Yeah. That's something that um, Gail Ann Ratty talks about. Mm -hmm. She said that it's really important to know your materials. Mm -hmm. Because she said people try to save like like how we use the seal skin, you said nothing gets thrown away. Mm -hmm. She said it's good to do that, but when you're working with um, shoes mm -hmm. and moose hide, you have to go yeah a that certain way. way. Yeah, because she said it's your sewing's gonna end up funny, stretching the other yeah, way. Yeah, one side one side's gonna be fit, and the other side is gonna mm -hmm. be. Who's, bigger is than this your shoe? Yeah. Yeah. And when you're doing patterns, you try to make sure you use or fit mm -hmm. the whole part and try not to waste. Yeah. And also pieces like this they used to keep because if they were out on the bottom, mm -hmm. you have a patch for them. Yeah. those parts did you want to use this for the trim or just seal skin um just it's seal skin you. for now just and then skin. once it's done we can put see. the trim mm -hmm. put, decide which one you want to yeah. do okay i don't know if you want this so this is like um i can't remember what the lady called it but she said it's a cross between strout and fleece this is nice yeah 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's really soft. <laughs> it's almost like that um, heated pad. Yeah, she she said it's a cross between fleece and strout. Then it must be really warm. I'm not sure. It, That's just what she said. Must be good just the lady for cushioning who sold it. the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was thinking if you wanted to use that, you can. If not, we can get duffel for the next episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whichever one is, yeah. is best that you want to do. Do you want me to cut them out? Uh, yeah. Do you want me to cut this one out? I can yeah, cut you could, out. Yeah, you could cut yours. This could be, we'll have to cut these out on the next mm-hmm. episode because that's the one thing we forgot. And that's another reason why we had to have our ulus or knives really sharp because we didn't really have scissors. You mentioned um, when I was talking to you and, and we were deciding what to do. You mentioned that you grew up doing carving. Did you do carving too? Mm-hmm. Did you work with like soapstone or just like um, muska corn or? All different kinds of stone. Yeah. And horns, yeah. And bone. Yeah. Did you ever do it like professionally or just for fun? It was just a pastime. Yeah. And then when they started asking me to make stuff, I just gave up. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> fun anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and with um, driftwood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you play a lot of Nabachuk? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We did a lot of um, target practicing and... Nabachuk. Do they get a lot of driftwood in in Ulu? Mm-hmm. There's nothing in Sox Harbor around Banks Island. I know that's so <laughs> funny because we used to get the logs too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We used to, when we go out summer, spring and summertime. My dad used to um, bring back logs and we used to cut them up or put them up for um for the radio. Mm-hmm. Antenna lines? Yeah. Yeah. I remember growing up, we always, my, my nanak and dadak always had the radio going. Mm-hmm. And I remember I used to listen to stories or plays. I used to hear commercials, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, late at night in, on the coast in Dupkuk outside of Tuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I used to tell my nanak, I'm bored. I'm bored. I have no toys or nothing. Just a little kid must have been like <laughs> six, seven, and she said, "Come, babies." That's what she called me, babies. Uh-huh. And she take cardboard, take crayons, and she used to draw little dolls on cardboard and color them in. Mm-hmm. And then she used to say, "Here, look, you have like two little girls." And she used to play dolls with me, like cardboard dolls. I cherish that memory so much. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. This one, there was a, I think it was about three, four years ago. Mm-hmm. I went to this one camp. It was so cute. There was this little kid. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they've seen a, a radio, those CB, those yeah. orange radios. Mm-hmm. Chopper radios? Or bush radios yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm before and they're kind of loud when you put them on and you can Mm -hmm. hear people talking Mm -hmm. and this kid turns around grandpa you could put it on mute (laughs) (laughs) Mute. (laughs) and then and a while later could you use headphones with that 
Because <laughs> it was so loud and noisy. Yeah. You could hear all these people talking. Oh, I love and, that. Oh, she, I think she was watching something on her phone. Mm -hmm. That's when she was asking to, if he could put it on <laughs> mute or <laughs> use headphones. Never heard that before? No, I don't think they've seen <laughs> <laughs> or seen anybody use a radio before. Yeah. I'll start my own. I could sew too. I was thinking, I'll just let you sew, and I could sew my mitts that I never did finish. And then I thought, wait, I might want a pair of slippers too. <laughs> Maybe I should sew, sew them. My first doll I made, me and my sister. Actually, there was uh, three of us, three of us, sisters, mm -hmm. and the other two were um, juggling with uh, round rocks, and I was sewing a doll. I don't know what made me sew a doll. <laughs> <laughs> I got it done, and it had no face on it, and my sister Bev told me to stitching some eyes and nose and mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we did we did that, but we drew the mouth. Mm -hmm. My sister Wilma came in and she said, "Oh my goodness!" And my sister Beth said, "It's cute, huh?" She <laughs> <laughs> looked at it. She's like, "That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen." <laughs> she wasn't impressed was like, with the stitches. She took me so long and it came out ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Those dolls too are really valuable now. They are. They're not made as abundant as mm -hmm. they used to be. They they're probably hard because like I can't imagine the detail that you would need to lots like, of pieces. Yeah. I couldn't get over it when I was watching um uh Rosie Albert. Mhm. Mm She's got so much patience. I Oh my goodness, that's a really long project. She said, if you learn how, it doesn't take you that long. Yeah. I I say, like, there was a garage sale I went to, mm -hmm. and someone was selling one of those little dolls. Mm -hmm. And I could see one woman looking at it, and she was holding it, and humming and hawing and she asked the person having the sale how much for the doll and that woman said well twenty dollars because I know it was expensive when I bought it like mm -hmm. 15 20 years ago and that woman put it back and as soon as I watched her walk across the road I went straight for that doll and I handed <laughs> her 20 bucks and I said that's the best buy I bought in 2000 mm -hmm. like last year I was like, I got my own little fancy doll for $20. And then that woman found out who I was and came up to me and said, Margaret, can I buy your doll off of you for 20 bucks? And I said, no, sorry, I'm keeping it. <laughs> they are really expensive. I used to mm -hmm. watch my mom make those um, animal packing dolls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was quite the experience. I came, I went home and I was like, look at what I got. <laughs> Best garage sale find. Yes, we never had those. We had rocks, round rocks to pack. <laughs> <laughs> For what? <laughs> to play with? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Either that, they were stick or rocks. Oh my goodness. I had cardboard, cardboard dolls, but I love those dolls. Mm -hmm. my, I thought my nanik was the smartest person ever when she <laughs> made them for me. <laughs> Everything was kept, even pieces of paper. Yeah. It was so valuable. I don't want to go. We used to have to use them to make patterns or to make them. Um, toys or. That's what they taught us in the sewing yeah. program to use. We them. had to keep 
we had to make stuff to keep ourselves occupied or entertained. Cereal boxes. Mm -hmm. We used cereal boxes and biscuit calendars. boxes, yeah. egg boxes, egg cartons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even um, plastic we used to ensure value. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was like glass. Mm hmm. Almost so you could done. see through it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to pick, like, did your family ever use acrylic? Mm hmm Yeah? Yeah. Did you, do you remember picking Arctic cotton? Was that something that you had to do? Mm hmm Yeah? Yeah. It's so pretty. It's such a pretty plant. And we used to have to soak it in oil, in the um, seal oil or in oil that was formed, like even a whale blubber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like oxok? Yeah. Mm hmm Oogie Is it the same word for oogie -ook? It's oxok too? As whale? Oogie -ook, bearded seal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that oxok? Oxok is fat. Oh. I'm thinking of the fermented. Like, you know when our, we eat oxok, like the the beluga whale? Wipayak. Is that the word? Yeah. I just say oksok. <laughs> yeah. Is it the same word though, I mean, for a whale, the fermented fat? For whale and, and okiok, is that the same Ugiuk, thing? It's yeah. all oksok, mm -hmm. like, yeah? Okay. Yeah. I got confused for a second. Dip, they call it. Yeah. yeah. I swear our shows are going faster and faster every episode. We must be getting used to them. But it's so nice to have these kinds on for people to watch. It is. It's it my is. goal to get every mm -hmm. Innova look. Every single one that will say yes <laughs> to being on, on live on a live show. So so far in the next episode we'll cut out we'll trace out my shoes mm -hmm. um, for the seal and I got my my bottoms and on the next episode we will cut these out and start sewing and we can continue sharing stories sure. it's like my favorite pastime is like sitting around and talking with mm -hmm. them I just love sharing stories me and, too yeah so are we good okay so we're gonna end the show now mm -hmm. and yeah Thank you, everyone, to tuning in and watching today's episode of the Dunana Nick Show. We will have Barb on next week for the second part to this and continue with the slippers. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Yeah. See? Oh. Easy. <laughs> it went by really quick. Yeah. <laughs> Once you start chatting, well, look, I made oh, a ring.